Hey guys, happy new year. Hope everyone is doing well. I feel absolutely amazing. I'm excited about what 2021 is going to bring to us. I hope you guys are feeling the same. I hope you're connected to a vision and a future that is bigger than your past. So the question, the main question for this evening is, how good are you willing to let life get? How good are you willing to let life get? And your decision to grow to the level that you decide to grow is actually your answer to that particular question. I remember a season in my life where I stopped growing. I just, I was in a space where I was settling. I was listening to conversations around me, appeasing to people around me who had no desire to go further, higher, um, bigger, faster, more expansive. That just wasn't their desire. And because of my connection, I felt obligated to And I I don't want to use the word dumb down because we use it so much, but to uh, hide my gifts, I felt compelled to, let me put our title in in the comments if it allows me to. Uh, Yeah, it does. How good are you willing to let life get? You guys say hello. It is 2021. Hey, Periscope, look, Periscope. Um, is no longer going to be available after March, I believe. So make sure you're connected with me on Facebook, facebook.com slash build with Tanya. That is always an ideal um, space to connect. I'm on another one of my social media platforms as well, but that's definitely a good one. So whenever Periscope goes away, you can still connect with me there or at renewfullcircle.com. And look, I'll just go ahead and do an introduction since <clears throat> I'm kind of in that flow as well. Guys, say hello if this is your first time on a live broadcast with me. Um, say hello in the comments. Let me know what type of business you own, the name of your business, how do you serve in the marketplace. If this is not your first time on a live broadcast with me, put hashtag renew in the comments. And for all of you um, OGs, who have been on with me before we know renew uh, is because what we do over here is renew our minds back to the space God originally intended it to be, which is a space of abundance, peace, prosperity, love, and joy, as well as renew being the name of my consulting business. <clears throat> renew full circle. So put hashtag renew in the comments. And thirdly, um, whether it's your first time or not, you can share. So whatever platform you're on, however, whatever the capabilities are for you to share, you can do that. There's a little button on the left-hand side on Facebook that says share and something magic happens when you press it. It allows you to share out with someone else who could use this message. How good are you willing to let life get? I believe that that question alone is expansive. I believe that there are unlimited possibilities about what's possible for you, um, what's possible for me, as far as it relates to life getting gooder, better, greater, however we want to say it. And all of it is aligned with um, your decision to grow. So I am a, a master life coach and business coach. I am the growth strategist. Um, the founder of 3D Success Academy for Women in Business. And I help women to build businesses that fund their lifestyle, not run their lifestyle. So I completely and fully believe, one, you need peace to prosper. And two, you need rest during the process. So oftentimes we get in the swing and we get in the flow of, you know, the hustle mode and So many people wear themselves out. So many people have amazing businesses and brands, but the way that they're operating, right? The amount of time that they're dedicating to the business um, and not getting the results is always what 
you know, breaks my heart. I believe there's a space when we um, decide that peace is going to be our portion, when we decide to simplify our lives and our business. Um, I believe that space actually is a super lane for prosperity, um, which I'm experiencing myself. And I'm actually just coming off of productive rest. Now, for those of you who will come on in your past clients or customers of mine or present uh, clients and customers of mine, especially those of you inside 3D Success Academy, we're just coming off of productive rest. And so this is my first live broadcast for the new year. Um, I can't always see the comments. Let me see if I'm able to uh, access the comments from my phone, maybe, so that I can interact with you all. But we're just coming off of productive rest. So for a month, the month of uh, July and December, I do what's called productive rest and no coaching, no live broadcast. And it's just a time for me to renew my mind, uh, to reflect, reposition, you know, all the R words that everybody's using. Um, it's a time for me to do all of those things to make sure that uh, my energy, my effort, my time, my resources is being put on the right thing, you know, the, the most prosperous things. It's so easy as an entrepreneur to, you know, get in the flow of business and forget about all of the other things, not literally forget, but allow our business to consume us to the point where, you know, our family goes on the back burner. Sometimes our finances, like you're spending so much or you're doing so much and you're not aware. So my productive rest time is absolutely amazing. It allows me to look at my processes and procedures and just kind of see um, what's working, what could be better. And um, it gives me a time to reflect. I believe that we're growing like all the time. And oftentimes we are outgrowing our brands and our businesses, uh, like internally we're growing and then our businesses and brands aren't growing with us. And so my question to you this evening, the main question, because I have a series of seven questions I want to propose to you, how good are you willing to let life get? How good are you willing to let life get? That's a question because many of you do exactly what I did. I hit a space in my life where um, I just started settling. I started, you know, listening to the limited beliefs of people around me or those I was connected to. Um, my dreams, I had big dreams and goals and I started putting all those things on the back burner and trading it for, you know, a normal life, if that's what you want to call it, because the world has its definition of, you know, what normalcy is and what uh, life should be. And if you don't decide for yourself what that's going to be, if you don't get a hold of a vision that's bigger than your past, right, if you don't decide to create a future that's bigger than your past, you will settle. And you will also answer the question, how good are you willing to let life get? And so growth is in complete alignment. Your decision to grow is in complete alignment with answering that question. So at the level that you've decided that you aren't gonna grow anymore, or you, know, you don't need any more um, information or nothing new is the point where you've answered the question. That's how good you're willing to let life get. So I'm going to ask you a series of seven questions on this evening uh, as it relates to how good are you willing to let life get? Number one, are you willing to bet on yourself as a divorced mom, single mom? Um, I decided to bet on myself. I remember around the time where we were making decisions about um, the property that we had, uh, we had a choice where we, one person could get it in their name and refinance it and, and then uh, split the equity with the other person. So that was an opportunity for me. And most people in my situation with a young daughter, single mom would have chosen that because it would have been easy, it would have been safe, um, but for me, I wanted something completely different. 
And I was willing to bet on myself. I knew that previously in my past, I, you know, had been uh, prosperous and productive in different areas when I put my mind to it. And I wanted something different. I wanted to experience something more. So I chose the latter. I moved my daughter to a completely new city, a completely new school. And I just started all over. And it wasn't this, um, you know, it wasn't because I was being irresponsible as much as I was willing to bet on myself. And so when you think about growth and growing in your life, one of the things you have to do is be willing to bet on yourself. There are going to be circumstances and times that come about where you got to make some decisions, right? That um, this is leading into number two, that require you to take some risk. <laughs> How many of you have been in, I'm sure, with uh, COVID-19 and what we're experiencing in the world today as an entrepreneur, many of you have had to take risks that you know you hadn't thought of. They were a little uncomfortable, or you were either faced with you know making a decision. And one, it will require you to take a risk. If you are wanting life, if you're wanting to see how good life is going to get, number two, you're going to have to be willing to take some risks. It's just you. The same. If you're doing the same thing, you will always get the same results. But if you're willing to bet on yourself, and what I told myself was, I know my work ethic. <laughs> you know, I know my um, tenacity, and you know, I'm willing to to go out there and do this. And and it's the best decision I could have made. I owned a brick and mortar service based business for ten years. I had 12 employees and I transitioned into consulting. But at the time when uh, I was separated and in the process of divorce, I was still teetering between the two businesses. And I made a complete decision to, to bet on myself and to take risks. I now have transitioned, excuse me, and I consult full time from my home. Guys, today I had a moment where I said, God, you know, I'm just so grateful for the space and time that I currently am in. My daughter, um, she's doing virtual school and I was just grateful to be home. She's like, Ma, I need, you know, such and such supplies. I'm like, sure, let's, let's go and get those. Um, she asked some questions about her course where they had parental correspondence through email and you know, I was just able to be attentive to her in that moment without feeling stressed and overwhelmed or um, as if what was transpiring in her life was, was a problem. But it's because I made a decision, I decided to bet on myself and I was willing to take a risk. And um, if you are wanting to see how good life's going to get, you're going to have to do those two things. Number three, the third thing you have to be willing to do is release thoughts of lack, release thoughts of lack. One of the trainings that releases inside 3D Success Academy uh, tomorrow is the Prosperity Portal. And it's about limiting beliefs and scarcity thinking and um, being aware of our thoughts and what's needed to actually step into that you know, next space of prosperity. And you have to release the thoughts of lack. One of the, so I have a series of limiting beliefs that I share with my clients inside the academy to help them become aware, like, is this something that I've been thinking? Um, could this be something that's, been, that's holding me back from my next? And one of the uh, counter thoughts for them that I want them to consistently uh, know and understand, and you as well, is that there is an infinite supply of money. I'm going to say that one more time. There is an infinite. I'm going to put that one in the comments. Let's see. There is an infinite supply of money. Let me see if it'll show. Let me send that to Periscope, show Periscope some love. 
there is an infinite supply of money. I asked the question, I proposed the question, whenever there's like an economic downturn or talk of a recession or, uh, you know, things just a little funny economically in the world, where does the money go? Like, where does it go? Does it fall off of the face of the earth? Does it leave the world? Those are questions that you want to ask so that you can get to, you know, the truth. No, the money just exchanges hands. And your responsibility as an entrepreneur, business owner, who's faced with, you know, what we're actually facing now is ideal for what we're facing now is to um, align with where the money is, align with those who are still willing to pay for the value of your services. And a lot of people struggle with that because it means becoming um, the next highest version of yourself. It's, it's just growth. That's, that's all it is. There's so many opportunities that we face that are calling us higher, calling us to grow, calling us to see how good life actually is. And, you know, it requires us to do, be willing to do a few things. Number one, I said, bet on yourself. Number two, take some risks. And number three, release thoughts of lack. You'll never invest. You'll never make strategic moves that are necessary um, for your next if you have thoughts of lack um, or scarcity that are um, overwhelming all of your decisions that you're, you're needing to make. I was going to say wanting, but you're needing to make uh, for your next. So you have to release, you have to be willing to release thoughts of lack. Number four, number four, you have to be willing to stretch, be willing to stretch. I was in Clubhouse. I'm like extremely new to Clubhouse. I've, I've been on it two days, one day, one day. Um, <clears throat> so you guys can search my name on Clubhouse. I think I'll try it out and start a room at some point, uh, just kind of finding my way around it. But I was listening in on a room today and they were talking about self-care for moms and balance. And so many of the uh, participants were asking like, how do you balance work with, you know, children and your schedules and doing all the things that are necessary to build your business? And the people on stage, I believe that's what you call it, uh, the panelists. OK, yeah, the panel. I think there's a panel, a stage and then an audience, I believe. So the people on the panel were a answering and responding and giving the young lady things that, you know, she could do to balance. Uh, to find time. And I thought they were amazing. One of the things uh, I do with my clients is CEO, CEO schedule mapping, and that's helping them to prioritize their time and um, work smarter and not harder. So it was right up my alley. I, I agree with a lot of what they said. And, you know, there were people even praying for the young lady because she sound stressed. And I know I, my daughter is 15 now, uh, but I remember when she was a lot younger and wasn't as independent as she is now. And even now it's still, you know, tons of responsibility aligned with, you know, having a teenage daughter. But I remember the, the, those ages, you know, where <clears throat> they just really couldn't do for themselves and you needed to sleep when they slept. And so I remember this one particular incident, I was attempting to do my first webinar and it wasn't like a visual webinar. It was, um, I don't even know what you call it because it was just over, it was over the phone. Uh, but it's like a webinar. What were they called? Can't remember. But my daughter was in her room and she was playing with um, her toys and everything. And she had an allergic reaction, like as soon as I got ready to go on. And in that moment, and there was another time, like I, I think I did it a different week or month or something. And then there was another incident. Um, and you know, of course she was in her room, but I could hear her and, and all of that. And she knows to come to me regardless. That was one thing I told her, regardless of what is transpiring, you can always come to me even when I'm working. She's older now, so I can tell her, look, you know, you know, well, it's actually still the same. She just really understands it um, at another level now. But I remember, you know, trying to do the things that were necessary to build and grow my business and, you know, not really having support um, although at that time I wasn't a single mom, but I still didn't have like the, the spousal support that would have been great at that time. And so I remember feeling really overwhelmed and, uh, 
like it was hard, right? I felt like crying, but because I knew that there was something greater, I was willing to be stretched. But what was interesting about the conversation in Clubhouse was after everyone gave her all of the tactical things that she could do to find balance as a mom and a business owner, uh, one la lady shared with her, she said, I don't have children, but I have cancer. My gosh. She said, and what I do is, you know, I work on the days that are really, really good days. I do as much as I can so that when those days and times come that I just don't feel like it, um, I can take a break without feeling stressed. They talked about batching, which is one of the things, one of the strategies I teach inside 3D Success Academy is to batch out your work, batch out your content for social media. Those things allow you time instead of, instead of feeling pressured to do things every single day, right? To batch it out, but batching requires a plan. And people struggle with planning. And I think it's because they don't have a clear vision. I'm gonna to talk to you guys about vision a little later. I'm actually hosting a masterclass called uh, Create a Future Bigger Than Your Past. And I'm doing a bonus vision board party. Now, this is crazy. And for those of you who come on, do not shoot me because I've had several people over uh, the years to ask me about hosting a vision board party. And, um, you know, was that something that I could offer or teach them or walk them through? And I declined every single time. Uh, vision has definitely been my, my baby for about, I've been teaching vision for about a decade. But at that time, I was just at another space of teaching vision. But I realized that there are a lot of people who have not gotten to uh, the visualization part of their vision. Hold on one second, guys. And so I took inspired action and I decided to host a class, but of course it's a master class as well as a vision board party. And I think it's important because the master class is going to give you what you need to align so that you can actually manifest what's on the board because so many people create a vision board and it never manifests. So I'm gonna walk you through the steps that you need to align with what is on your vision board. For those of you who are interested in joining us for that, it's gonna be amazing. We'll be next. I'm gonna put the link up in the comments. If this gets off my, there we go. That is the link for you to join us for uh, the vision board party. But I was thinking about um, the fact that this lady who had cancer was still running and working her business. How many of us make excuses that are on a much lower level, a much smaller scale about why we can't do what we need to do, right? And I think so many people are waiting. This lady to me sounded like someone who was willing to see how good um, life could get, right? She was willing to bet on herself and then you know, choose to work on the greatest times, the times that she had the most energy. Um, and that requires another level of awareness, which is something I, I talk about all the time, guys. Like one of the things I'm aware of is I may need to move the Build with Tanya live every Wednesday from 9.30 to 9 o'clock because I'm a morning person. So I'm up super early and I'm in the bed super early. And I realized that every time, you know, I'm about to do a broadcast, I got to do, you know, extra stuff to keep my energy up. And so I was like, I think if I move it up about 30 minutes, I'm undecided. But just being aware of yourself, what is the best time of the day for you? You know, when do you do your greatest work? Don't work against who you are, right? Get in alignment with who you are and flow from, from that space. I have a client who shared with me that she's a night owl. She was like, I'm terrible. I know I need to get up, you know, super early. And what I shared with her was, if you can find a space to run your business the way that you, you operate, if you're a night owl, don't change. Who said you have to get up early? This is my flow. I believe, you know, the morning time is just 
a special time for me, early, early morning. I get so much done. Um, but if, if you're a night owl, then, you know, still create the time necessary each and every day, but working around, you know, the unique way that you do it, right? So anyway, you have to be willing to stretch. And sometimes stretching is doing it when you don't always feel like it, right? So it's not always going to be super comfortable. I talk about building businesses that you love. You can love your business and then have some things that you have to do that you don't absolutely love doing until you're in a place where you can hire someone um, to do those things for you. And I completely believe in hiring as well is uh, one of the things I push for my clients. Me and my clients are at their six figure mark or greater and um, they're overwhelmed. And so I teach them hiring strategies, how to hire the best people right? And delegate those things out that they just don't like doing so they can operate in their superpowers. But if you are going to um, see how good you're going to let life get, you have to be willing to stretch. You have to be willing to do something that's a little uncomfortable, a little outside of your normalcy. If you're looking for uh, the next level of goodness in your life. Um, so many things have transpired for me uh, over the last three or four years that required me to stretch, required me to step outside of what was normal. And I have absolutely no regrets. God is still revealing and opening up opportunities um, and opening up my heart, right, to what's actually available and possible. So many times we're stuck in a box. And I, when I work with women in business, many women are stuck in their industry, right? And so the industry only normally does it this way. This is the path the industry takes. This is what they do next. This is what they do first. And so many times that box, that industry box limits people from really seeing how good life can get. Many people step into um, a next phase inside their industry that they don't even love. They don't even want to do. But it's because that's what the normalcy is for the industry. So I uh, challenge you to, to stretch, um, especially your mind, especially your thinking. Number five, are you willing to have a season of laboring so that you can gather? Are you willing to have a season of laboring so that you can gather? Now, I, I love manifestation. Um, when we're in alignment, things really do just flow. But that doesn't mean you can hum <laughs> and, you know, magic things magically appear, right? We have to get in alignment with it. And the ease and the grace that comes with it is the being part for us. So when we become the person that can operate at that level, um, when we become the person who can sustain what's at the next level, there's an ease of grace and a flow about what transpires, you know, in our life. And oftentimes, you know, we've labored. I love gardening too. So gardening is a part of my self-care uh, regimen. I can't wait till spring comes. I'm like ready to stick some seeds in um, the little task right now. And it may be a little bit too early, but um, gardening is my form of self-care. But I know that there's a time where I have to labor, right? I have to till the soil. I have to prepare the soil, you know, plant the seeds, water them, get the weeds out, you know, watch them grow, take care of them. And then there's a harvest that I can gather. And so you have to ask yourself, am I waiting for this thing to just magically appear? Now there's an abundance that occurs because of the laboring that you did. Now, I don't believe that earning money or revenue always has to be because you've done hard work, hard labor. So however you consider labor, but there are some things that you will have to do um, to gain the momentum for things to continue to manifest and and um, be at a space where you can you know receive a harvest. So, are you willing to have a season of labor so that you can gather? Number six, are you willing to handle the full level of complexity your current audience, staff, clients, business needs? And what I mean by that is. So, so many people want to move to their next level. I completely believe in it. But before they, you know, build a strong foundation for what they already have, they're trying to move on to something else. One of the questions I heard inside Clubhouse 
this evening was, you know, how do people manage several businesses? And uh, the panel, you know, answered the question similar to, to the way that I have. I believe you should be, build a strong foundation in one business before trying to move over to the next, where that business can pretty much run by itself. Um, I don't mean that you're never involved or you're never connected, but maybe you've uh, you change roles in that particular business from actually being, you know, a service provider to where you're a visionary and you're actually leading and training staff, something that you can do in less than an hour day, um, something you can do in a few meetings. I just believe that you should get one business foundationally sound before moving to the next. That's one way. <laughs> Uh, to truly, truly, you know, balance what it is that you're doing. So are you willing to, you know, um, handle the full level of complexity uh, for it, for your current situation? So um, many of you may have staffing issues. Maybe you aren't, you know, attracting the right audience on social media. Uh, before you move on to something else, are you willing to handle the complexity of what's already in front of you? Uh, and then... Number seven, and I have a bonus um, question. Number seven, are you willing to admit you don't know it all? Guys, mentors and coaches, I absolutely love them. As a um, master life and business coach myself, I have to have mentors um, in my life. There's always someone who knows a little more than I do. And if you're, and these, the bonus question kind of ties in with this because um, are you willing to let your business talk to you? Are you willing to listen to your business, right? And what I mean by that is if you sit down and you get quiet, your business will begin to talk to you. If you're overwhelmed, um, your business may be saying, I need you to get some help. <laughs> I need you to get a VA, a personal assistant, um, someone that can duplicate the services that you're doing. Maybe that's what your business is saying to you. If your business isn't producing the revenue that you desire, maybe your business is saying, I need you to get some help again. I need you to get someone who can share some information, um, you know, with you. Maybe, you know, it's your website. You're like, my website is up. I can see all my insights. People are coming, but, you know, nobody's actually buying. You know, are you doing a call to action? Are you asking them to buy now, schedule, things of that nature, Right. So those are things that um, may be the missing links in what you have transpiring. And so this is where you have to be willing to admit, you know, maybe it's something that I'm missing or I don't know. And there's someone else who has the information I need for my next. So are you willing to get quiet and allow your, businesses to, your business to talk to you? It is always speaking to you. Your business is always speaking to you. That is my take as our first Build with Tanya live for 2021. I'm super, super excited. I'm ready. I'm ready to serve and support you in your next level of growth. For those of you who are looking to grow businesses that fund your lifestyle, not run your lifestyle, you're looking to scale, um, you're looking to find the gaps in between your now and your next in your business, you can always connect with me at renewfullcircle.com. And for those of you who just aren't quite clear on the direction that you want to head, a vision is it's a must, guys. It's a must that you get a vision. Vision talks to you as well, right? A vision will simplify your life and your business. It will tell you what to say yes to. It'll tell you what to say no to. And I always say without vision, we go anywhere with anyone and we do anything. We go anywhere with anyone and we do anything without a clear vision. Join us for the Create a Future Bigger Than Your, your Past um, Masterclass with a bonus vision board party. It's gonna have all the instructions you need. It's virtual um, because of Rona, but it'll have all the instructions you need to um, join us for the vision board workshop that's at the end of the masterclass. Guys, your vision board, um, it's, it's really been given a bad name, which is one of the reasons for years I had people asking me to host them. And it's not because I didn't do vision boards. My daughter and I um, re revisit our vision board every single year around this time. So it's not that I didn't do them, but I was teaching vision on a different level. But I think it's important. Visualization is a part of manifestation. 
you being able to visualize it. And some of you don't have a vision that's big enough for what your heart is desiring. Um, and so you need to be in a room that's talking about possibility and expansion. And I invite you to join us for uh, the masterclass. So the link is here on the screen for you now. I pray that everybody is well um, as this message reaches you and ask yourself the question, how, how um, good am I willing to let life get? And then realize that you deciding to grow is going to be in alignment with how good you allow life to get. I will see you guys next Wednesday at 9.30 p.m. When I change the time, I'll let you guys know. Um, probably about 30 minutes. 30 minutes makes a difference <laughs> to someone who gets up 4 o'clock in the morning, children. So I hope you guys have been blessed. Um, seven questions, gave you eight questions to ask yourself. Were you willing to do? Are you willing to bet on yourself? Are you willing to take some risks? Are you willing to release thoughts of lack? Are you willing to stretch? Are you willing to have a season of laboring so that you can gather? Are you willing to handle the full level of complexity? What you already got going on now with your clients, staff, your audience on social media, whatever that is, are you willing to handle the full level of that, right? Um, and then are you willing to admit that you don't know it all? Guys, it's such an amazing place to, to be in a space where you're, um, a lifelong learner, right? Where you're willing to say, hey, maybe it's something else that I'm missing. Maybe it's something else that I need to know that's actually, well, that is the answer because the only reason you're not at your next level is a piece of information, is some information that is lacking. And last but not least, are you willing to listen to your business? It talks to you all the time. You guys have a good one.